how to fix an expansion join in concrete. In this video, we're going to look at how to close the expansion joints that come open during time between the concrete slabs. First thing you need to do is clean the old material from the expansion join using wood chisel. Remove all the material at least half an inch deep if you cannot take it all out. This is a slow process, but this is a very important process because we want to at least accomplish half an inch depth of space for the caulk to fit in when you repair the crack. Also, the material comes in typically common forms. One is a fiberboard, brownish kind of looking, which tends to rot with time and water. And the second one is actually tar, which are older. The tar ones, the problem with the tar ones, as you remove it, if you do it on a hot day, the pieces of tar will try to stick to the concrete to make sure that you actually clean that quickly. Also, you'll notice that in some cases, the expansion is totally gone. That it's great because you don't have to worry about removing anything out of it, but that is allowing water on the your slab and creating more problems. Once you remove all the material, sweep it off the way. And after you sweep all that material off the way, you also may want need to blow the crack up uh, clean. It is important that the expansion joint that you're going to repair be dry because the caulks do not stick to the wet concrete very well. After that process, uh, what you need to do, wherever all the material came out, you need to insert a backer rod. Backer rod contains the caulk from flowing down the crack. The backer rod should be at least half an inch deep and at least a quarter inch wider than the width of your expansion joint. So if your expansion joint is half an inch wide, you'll need a 7 8 backer rod. The purpose of this is because the backer rod needs to lock in place, and if the backer rod is just loose sitting there, when you put the caulk, it will float and it will make a big mess of your whole project. So make sure that you cover every potential hole. The next step of that is to basically make sure the backer rod is half an inch deep. You can use the back of a screwdriver and just push it down to have an inch strip, but do not make holes on the backer rod. Or you can use what we call an insert tool, a backer rod insert tool, which automatically gauges to half an inch in depth. If you're going to do a lot of this work, I highly recommend buying a backer rod insert tool. If it's only a one-time project, the back of a screwdriver will work just fine. As you can see, you can, it's a pretty quick job. It's not very difficult. You would also notice in our part here that there is a dark area. The dark area is where we could not get the rest of the material, all material out of it, so we just basically chipped it to half an inch deep. Now that job looks like this, you're ready to start sealing the edges of the concrete. The next step is going to be to seal the side of the back rod, so you have to go on one side and the other side. The purpose of sealing the side is because the caulk that you're going to be inserting is what we call a flowable self-leveling caulk. It's very liquidy. Think of a liquid gum. And if there's any holes or any type of pinholes, it will flow through there. You will never be able to close it by just inserting more of that self-leveling caulk. So by using the 116 caulk, we are sealing all the potential holes that there may be in the edges. You want to make sure that you do both sides of the back rod. Take your time this is a very important point because later on trying to repair this is kind of a difficult thing to do, but it is not impossible, but it can be done. The areas where you did not remove all the material also need to be sealed. And if there's any holes that you could potentially see, the 45 SSL flowing, you will want to seal that too as well. So just think of us filling up with water. Where would that water go? The next step is to actually fill the joint with the self-leveling caulk, 45 SSL. As you fill in the, the joint, you want to make sure that you are at least one eighth of an inch off the surface. You do not want to fill it all the way to the surface because when concrete gets hot, it expands, it compresses its joints, and if it's level with the surface, it will create a tripping point. So therefore, you want to be one eighth of an inch. Okay. The caulk will remain sticky for a couple of days. So what we like to do is uh, cover it with finishing sand. Finishing sand, it's a very light sand, very fine. You cannot use regular sand because regular sand is heavy and it will sink into the caulk and make it come off the joint and spill over the sides. Slowly blow it up with a blower carefully so you wouldn't move your self-leveling caulk. Allow the sand to sit there for about 10 minutes and now you will have a nice clean joint sealing the gaps between your concrete slabs and prevent the water from getting underneath there. And the most typical damage is when the joints are open and exposed, they will let water underneath the slab and they'll start sinking and moving and therefore creating more problems, potentially cracking or just aging faster. 